I can, and I can hear Mark. Mr. Cowan, can you hear me? Martin, can you hear us? I can't hear you or Martin. I heard Mr. Cowan. Mr. Cowan, can you hear me? So what would be wrong with ours? Yeah. You can hear me? Yes. I can't hear you. Okay, well, I can't hear you or Martin. And of course, the, we can't hear the boardroom at all. I can I can hear the boardroom. I don't know if you can hear us. I can hear the boardroom. I, I let the them know. Can you, Martin, can you hear Mr. Cowan? Put your thumbs up if you can hear Mr. Cowan. Hmm. I can, I can, I can hear you too. Uh, William, can you hear us? I don't know what's going on. Uh, yes, I can. Thank you. I'm working on it. Okay, I, okay, I can hear you guys now. Oh. Well, can the meeting hear us? I don't think so. I, I texted them. You can hear me. Yeah. Mr. Cowan, can you speak? And I'll turn on my microphone so I you can, can hear me. Not well, but I can speak. <laughs> okay. All right. So the boardroom now I can hear Bunny. We couldn't hear her before. All is well. Thank you. Well, can they hear us? Yeah. They said they can hear us. Yeah. I'm going to be calling the meeting to order. Okay, good. We can hear you now. We couldn't hear you before. Okay, great. All right, this is the 59th annual meeting of the corporate members of the Golden Rain Foundation of Laguna Woods, a California nonprofit mutual benefit corporation, Wednesday, November 8th at 10 o'clock in Laguna Woods uh, boardroom. So I now call the meeting to order, and I just want to basically say that some of us can attend virtually and uh, the number, the Zoom number is 895-00-280-643 or call 1-669-900-6833 or access code 895-00-280-643. Okay, so uh, we will now have Joan Millman lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Are there any objections? So the approval, the agenda is approved. And the next is member comments. And so I want to let everybody know you have a three minute limitation. And we have no audio or video recording by attendees and no rude or threatening comments. So do we have any speakers? No speakers? Okay. Okay, great. 
All right, so we're moving forward here, and uh, next is the chair remarks, and when I find my notes, I'll start reading them. So, <laughs> so I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I had them all here. I am a little nervous today, I have to tell you, but I'll try to do this for memory, and basically I wanted to let you know that, um, no, I, I already... There's no, yeah. President, so, President Carpenter, we have to prove the minutes first from last year. Approval of minutes. Okay, I'm sorry. What well, said member, members' comments? None. None. Okay, I'm sorry. Like I said, I'm very nervous today. So the next item is the approval of the corporate members' meeting, and, um, and that would be the November 9th. 2022 58th annual meeting of the corporate members. Are there any objections? Any changes? No objections. Then the corporate member meeting uh, minutes are approved. And the next is the chair remark. So I basically wanted to say that every year uh, we have this time that we can show what GRF has done during the year. And I have to tell you, by the end of the year, I am so surprised when you put it together to see what we've accomplished. Because basically, TRF has a big responsibility. I think everybody knows we have, we have all the recreation, we have the clubhouses, we have services, we have a lot to do. And, um, and so as we go forward right now, we're gonna have each chair talk about um, what has been accomplished with GRF for this year. So that's my introduction, and so let's go to the next slide. Um, I think you're all aware of the people that are on the board at this point in time. I'm Bunny Carpenter, president, and you're going too fast. <laughs> so, so Debbie Dotson was the first VP, Razik. Karimi, second vice president, Joan Milliman, secretary, James Hopkins, treasurer. And then the next would be Elsie Addington, director, Egon Gartha, author, director, Yvonne Horton, Gan Mahakapade, if I mispronounce that, I apologize, um, Martin Rosa, director, and Juanita Skillman. And I have to tell you, they've all done a wonderful job as far as their support of the GRF board this year. So let's start with General Services, which is Elsie Addington. Thank you, Madam President. Um, General Services is a division that covers a, a, a lot of different areas of, of, of work in the village. For instance, they, they handle concrete, uh, concrete work, um, street repair. There's, there's a lot of things that they cover, but the, 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 the jewel in the crown Oh, and they also maintain the, the fleet for the village, which includes uh, vehicles that we use in security, transportation, uh, landscape, etc. cetera. Um, but the jewel in the crown for me is the transportation uh, division. In accordance with VMS, oh, the transportation uh, is, 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 is responsible for, amongst other things, for the, the bus services that run through the village for our residents. In accordance with VMS right sizing program, two new ProMaster low floor buses were approved. Smaller vans are less expensive, more efficient, and environmentally friendly. And these small vans replaced larger vans, larger buses. Uh, due to efforts orchestrated and coordinated by GRF President Bunny Carpenter, in June, Mobility and Vehicles Committee approved the participation of General Services Department in Sourcewell, a service cooperative which, at no cost or obligation to its members, combines 50,000 government, education, and nonprofit organizations to negotiate fleet purchases at competitive prices. This saves the time, saves the village time and money in replacing vehicles as needed when repair of existing vehicles is no longer cost effective. It improves efficiency, saves time and labor in purchasing um, approximately 400 vehicles a year. Or, you have, is that a year or no? I guess that's total, sorry. Um, 
As a result of source well agreement, of the source well agreement, additional efficiencies allow for quarterly M and V meetings rather than bimonthly, while preserving our purchase and pricing procedures and freedom to shop elsewhere. Oh, okay. I, I couldn't quite quite tie these in. Uh, while preserving our purchase and pricing procedures and freedom to shop elsewhere, uh, the new procedures involving SourceWell will reduce the steps necessary to purchase vehicles for, M and, for vehicles for MNC, general services, landscaping, security services, and others. And as a result of that, that's what's going to, uh, those, those additional efficiencies are going to allow the quarterly meetings rather than the bi-monthly meetings. Uh, thank you. Okay, the next would be Reza Karimi, and I have to tell you that he has done an excellent job of maintenance and construction. So, will you Thank you, Madam continue? President. It was a, uh, a pleasure to serve on the, as an MNC chair for a short period of time, and uh, I appreciate all the support I got from our board and all the other boards. They were great helping us to move things forward. Uh, on the maintenance and construction side, we completed the GRF paving, the seal code. The seal code was done for the areas of Cal Aragon, Castillas, uh, mainly in uh, uh, United. And then uh, there is also Avenida Sosiega for the uh, third metro. Also, we did concrete replacement for the areas of uh, Via Estrada, Calasarona, and uh, we did it on Del Sol, Gate 11, and Cantante, and those are the areas that the asphalt was replaced. The cost was around $830,000, and that's uh, regular maintenance that we do based on the condition of the streets. Uh, we don't wait till the real pothole shows up, but if we have problem, we try to have, uh, have it fixed before we have potholes. We installed gate three, uh, the Shepherd Crook fencing. Uh, that completed the GRF Shepherd Crook fencing, so we don't have anything for the coming year on insta installation of Shepherd Crook. I understand that still the other mutuals have some to do, but that's up to the other mutuals. We started the uh, driving range for the, you know, uh, the uh, renovation of the driving range. We did the seating, and I'm happy to report that last Friday there was a grand opening, and actually uh, the restaurant 19 brought a lot of uh, donuts and coffee, and there were a lot of happy people, and there were lot of happy people on the board also because that's the area that we make some money to take care of stuff because we, you know, give the balls for the price, you know, that when they do the, uh, the, the driving. So that is open now. The cost was around 375000 and we didn't have any cost growth, although we faced a little bit problem through the process, but the contractor was very cooperative. They took care of the business, and they did it on time and on the schedule, although we faced some issues at the beginning. We also awarded a contract for the equestrian security gate fencing, that $82,000, and we need the approval from fire department. The reason for that is that we are very close. We are right at the El Toro Road, and there are a lot of people can just walk in into the, you know, into the equestrian center that have no business to be there. We have horses there, and we have equipment, and that we need to take care of that, and we didn't have any security gate there, and that should be coming up pretty soon. And uh, we also completed the Equestrian Center trim and stall door painting. They were pretty bad shape for some of you that are familiar with that. You know, the door were chewed up by the horses, and there was no paint on it. It was pretty bad shape. And uh, those are taken care of. And uh, I suggest that if you get some minutes on your time and nothing else to do, go there and look at it. I think you're going to enjoy it. It was on $30,000 for that. 
completed Clubhouse One interior design that was for the $8,000, but I'm also happy to report that we generated an RFP based on all the input from the other committees. We sent the RFP out, we got three bits back, we had a presentation yesterday at the GRF regular meeting, and uh, uh, I'm happy to report also that GRF board decided to start negotiation with the, uh, one of the better, which was the low better, and uh, we will give you more information as that negotiation continue. I got a few comments on that from uh, some of the good friends saying that, uh, you know, we don't want to clubhouse two issues or all of that. I told them that, you know, if we make, you know, one mistake, that doesn't mean we have to repeat it again. I'm hoping and I'm counting on the staff and all of the uh, people involved to keep this project the same on time and uh, on budget. So hopefully we will have a, a better Clubhouse One with the cost that we all can live with. Uh, also we installed a new rooftop for HVAC for the broadband building. That one waiting for the uh, uh, some uh, uh, approval also from the city, I think, that uh, other than that, that is ready to go. That's uh, pretty much the activities for the maintenance that I want to report at this time. And uh, I want to again thank all the other committees that helped with making these things happen. And it was a pleasure to serve on that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So the next uh, committee uh, director is Juanita Skillman for security. And so I thank you for your support. And will you let us know what security Thank you, does? Madam Chair. <clears throat> I am so uh, proud of the security division, particularly this last year, because it was a very challenging year, both in logistics of where they are. They moved twice uh, for some of them. They were in a building that was falling down around their ears, and they are now in new quarters next door. And that was in April, but security dispatch, because of all of the technology that needed to go with that, moved here to the community center in April, and then in June moved over to the new building as well. So it's been a real flux year for the staff and security. Um, also, there's been a real difficulty in staffing, as there is in so many of our divisions. So we've been understaffed, but doing a great job anyway. We completed the flashing stop sign installation, which is a pilot project uh, going on till the end of the year. We will look and see how it works and uh, report back, but we did get those installed. We revamped gate 12 policy and procedures um, and created a great 12 visitor pass drop down for those who wanted daily passes into the 19 primarily. Um, we secured approval and funding for added stop signage uh, at Avenue Sevilla and Via Mendoza, which was a really difficult uh, intersection. And now we have stop signs on all sides and it's, uh, we had a traffic consultant engineering consultant who came in and helped us with that. Uh, we reviewed the status and update on the fire alert pilot project. Thank you, Cash. So this uh, worked very well. We had two successful activations from burnt food problems on stovetops who had the fire alert. We revamped security's uh, <clears throat> trespassing procedures with the Orange County Sheriff's Department. We work very closely with OCSD uh, because um, our security is security. They are not uniformed policemen. So this ensures effective lawful detentions and citizens arrest for those that we have trespassing. And we have had quite a few incidents of uh, people trying to get into the village or uh, particularly homeless climbing over fences and being where they should not be. We introduced committee and, <clears throat> and the members to our new OCSD Chief of Service Operations, uh, Captain Alday, and his staff, 
so that we would have a good relationship with them so that we know who they are. They're not just some name on a paper somewhere. We upgraded the gate ambassador training material, and this was so important because our gate ambassadors are the first face that most people see getting into the village. And <clears throat> we had had a big turnover because of COVID. Uh, we had like 60 new ambassadors this year. They needed to be trained. We needed to know we're still uh, currently working on their manual, their SOPs, <clears throat> standard operating procedures. Uh, but we've, we've done a really good job of training them. And we have reestablished direct communication with the Laguna Beach Animal Control Officer because of all the sightings we had on coyotes and uh, recent encounters that we had with members and pets. So uh, it's been a very busy year, but a very successful one. Thank you. Thank you, Juanita. So Joan Milliman is next. She's the secretary, and she's also the chair of Media and Communications Committee and actually she's the chair of the website committee and she's had a lot to do with the services that you enjoy, your TV, you know, and, uh, and uh, basically your communications for, for the enjoyment in our community. So I'm gonna turn over uh, the meeting right now to Joan Milliman to read it so that you can understand what Media and Communications has done this year. Thank you, Madam Chair. On the screen is the five areas where we communicate from. I'm going to elaborate a little bit more about those. Uh, and so just get that in mind, five different areas. Let's go to the next slide. One of the first ones is uh, the Village Breeze. It's a bi-monthly magazine, which we all enjoy. Features information from all the boards and topics of general interest to the village. It's delivered to every manor by a USPS, and every door gets the program. We also, the printing of the, and postage and everything is subsidized by Memorial Care. And we've renewed the contract with them for $600,000. We also put out What's Up in the Village, which is the weekly Friday email features, and it features village news, current events, programs, election notifications and so on, and it's open at a very high rate. Next. We also put two, several articles in the Laguna Woods Globe, and you'll notice there's the Village Bulletin, which gives current schedules for things like tree trimming, weed abatement, bulky item pickup, easy pay, and so on. Then there's the Village Report, done by, which gives short village news articles. And finally, Village Recreation also puts out news, programs, events, renovations, and schedules. Those things are all done by Susan, our faithful Susan McCormick. Next, next other services. In addition to all of that, Communications prepares a multi-format presentations for the boards, clubs, groups, and staff. They prepare written communications for public consumption. They support all VMS departments in writing, editing, design, signage, news, correspondence, and so on. And finally, the docent tours are also under us for we have a new resident orientation. Village television is one of our major communications and it's local origination in television since 1965. Their programming grows continues to grow with staff and club support. This day continues broadcasting now six days a week. Bobby Higgins and Michael Taylor are our new hosts on this day. The Trading Post continues to be a popular free service for residents. And the message board is updated daily with important community information. There are even special exercise classes for residents which are broadcast daily. And then, of course, there's Debbie Dotson's Let's Talk Tech, which keeps us all abreast with what's current in the electronics field. It's celebrating its second year now. Village Television broadcasts over 2,000 minutes of original content each month. And Village Television YouTube subscribers grew by 24% year over year. 
broadband services. A broadband is a service we get for the internet. So broadband service call trucks rolled, reduced the number of call truck rolls by 15%. A lot of the uh, problems have been taken care of right on the phone. Reduced customer wait time for in-home calls due to enhanced customer service, as I just said. You can get a lot done over the phone. Completed over 2,000 service calls and broadband maintenance work orders. There was one outage in 2023 related to a flooded Edison transformer. <coughs> We've processed over $4 million in programming invoices. That's income for us. They added two new channels at no cost to the community, Newsnet and Sports News and Sports News. Those two are now live and well on, on TV, and you, I hope you get a chance to look at them. Pay TV subscribers fell 14% due to streaming competition and pricing. And the staff continues to work closely with the broadband group to bring up-to-date technologies to the broadband network. Internet speeds were increased to 500 megabytes per second, and it was introduced as a top-tier service. At this point, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Martin Rosa, who's the chair of the Broadband Ad Hoc Committee. So if you can tune in, Martin, please. It's, uh, good morning. Uh, yes, I, I just wanted to add that uh, uh, you see there with the uh, processing of over 4 million in programming invoices, we know that is uh, going up every year. Uh, we know that the uh, broadband group is helping us in, in determining the best direction to go with the resources that we have uh, in, in determining uh, the, uh, what's going to happen uh, for the coming with streaming. I'm happy that uh, we now have uh, Village Television uh, is in beta testing for its own streaming uh, capabilities. Uh, Rather than channelized, uh, you can have, you can stream village television from whatever device uh, that you have. And that seems to be going quite well. So we're excited about uh, uh, the direction that things are going. I believe that we're going to, we're creating in quite a comprehensive math story problem that uh, will outright determine uh, the best direction to go uh, in the future, uh, given everything that is. Uh, that the whole community has to deal with. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. That's one of the biggest projects that we have in GRF this next year, uh, basically transferring uh, from cable to streaming. Uh, it's a change in the industry, and it's very necessary for us to be able to be prepared <clears throat> to go forward and change with the industry. So uh, thank you again, Martin. So the next one is Landscape Services. And again, we have Director Juanita Skillman, and who has done an excellent job as Chair of Landscape. Thank you, Madam Chair. Landscape Division is one of our biggest, both in staffing and in budget. Again, it hits everybody, all of our mutuals, the whole big area of Laguna Woods Village as a community. So some of the things that we have done this year, uh, our nursery. We have a wonderful nursery that grows almost all of the plants and trees that we use in the village so that we don't have to go out and buy them at third-party uh, stations. And uh, this year we installed a new weather-controlled irrigation system. We added electricity and data connections to the network to our uh, nursery. And we have a new office trailer. The one we had before was pretty rotten. This is up to date and we can put all of our technology in there. And we digitized the nursery inventory. So we have a fantastic way of knowing exactly where, what we have and where it is. Uh, in landscaping projects, <clears throat> we have a quarterly mulch giveaway, which is very popular with our residents because they can go to Clubhouse 3, Clubhouse 5 on a Friday to a Monday 
and get mulch to use in their individual gardens, either at the garden center or uh, in their uh, manor yards, etc. So the mulch getaway. We make our own mulch. All of the trees that you see trimmed, all of those kinds of things uh, go into our mulch so we don't have to buy anything. In fact, we have other cities and, and uh, uh, organizations coming to us and wanting to buy mulch from us because we have such a great job on it. <clears throat> we have had a gate uh, renovation project that's been going on this year in 2023. Uh, we finished gate one, which we started in 2022, and we have the rest of the gates that are scheduled throughout 2024. Again, that's the face of the village to people who drive in for the first time, and we want them to reflect the best that we have and look good. So um, we also have an urban forest management plan. Uh, United and Third submitted their final comments. We have a 90% finished draft and it's expected to be completed by the end of this month. Um, Urban Forest is a, a wonderful um, project organization that recognizes all of the 39,000 trees that we have here in Laguna Woods Village. In our landscaping projects, <coughs> we completed the analysis and design of the mower shop electrical to accommodate the charging stations for electrical equipment. We are, <clears throat> by state mandate, having to move over from diesel powered to electric powered for almost all of our equipment. And so uh, we had to make some adjustments so that we could then support those. The mower shop has been insulated. It was an uninsulated metal building that went up to 110 degrees in the summertime when it was in the heat. So now they have insulation. It's a little more comfortable to work in. We have a master control irrigation system. This is 99.5% complete. We have a couple of backordered parts that we're, we're waiting on. Uh, <clears throat> the estimated savings that we're going to have is about 800. Eight thousand seventy-three, eight hundred and seventy-three thousand. I'm terrible on these, but sorry, Jim. Uh, savings per year, uh, and it also is so much better for our staff because it can be done remotely. They don't have to get up in the middle of the night and when uh, sprinkler head breaks and it's shooting water all over the place, uh, they can know right away and take care of things. So we also save a tremendous amount of water, as you can see in that second part of the slide. So uh, that's been a big project this year to get that all in and up and running, which except for a little bitty bit, it is. Uh, in maintenance <clears throat> for landscaping, Aliso Creek is always one of our big projects. Uh, we completed two full cleanups and one small cleanup this year. And you can see from the before and after pictures that we now have some of a running creek going down through Aliso Creek. It's not completely clogged by uh, vegetation as it was. Uh, it took approximately 300 labor, labor hours. And the pre-winter cleanup is scheduled for this next week, November 13th. We do it spring and fall. And we permanently remove enough cattails to maintain an eight-foot channel. Now, this has been a real problem because the Aliso Creek is overseen by seven different federal organizations that we have to work with. It's not ours that we can go in and do anything we want with. We have to get permission. We've got to have a biologist out there. Uh, it's, it's a real big project. And we've also been removing the willows that interfere with the water flow. So uh, we're very pleased with what's happening with Aliso Creek. So <clears throat> one of the big things we did this year was had a meeting to explain the El, water, <clears throat> El Toro Water District cost changes. We have no control over much of, a lot of our utilities, and this is a big one. We pay for water, we pay for sewer. And we 
have no negotiation process, if you will. And so this, they came in and they showed us what it was going to be. We were able to keep it under 10% uh, for mm -hmm. all of the different areas. And uh, they uh, explained why they needed the money, what they were going to do with the money, and how each of it was going to be used. So it was a, a real eye-opener rather than just saying, we're raising your rates, just pay it. So that was a, a very... Uh, informative meeting. So what are we going to be doing this next year? Uh, landscaping gradually switching to the electric tools. All tools will be battery powered. We're converting a portion of the shop to the charging station for those because they <clears throat> usually have a four-hour charge and then they've got to be uh, change batteries and then recharge uh, the, the other batteries. We have 246 electric tools that will need 184 chargers for batteries. Just try to wrap your mind around that. That's a lot. <clears throat> the slope outside Clubhouse 6 is being renovated. Uh, it is too steep to mow safely. We're still having to do that manually because the mowers would slide on the turf, and that's going to be redone. The turf will be removed and professionally designed drought tolerant plantings will be put instead. So we do have quite a few things that we'll be doing this year besides all of our regular mowing your grass, collecting it, cutting your trees, all of the things that do with the landscape to keep Laguna Woods Village looking as beautiful as it is. <laughs> Thank you. So the next one is recreation and special events. And I have to thank Yvonne because she's done a wonderful job, you know, as chair of the CAC. That is a big uh, responsibility as far as our community goes. It's all the amenities, the clubhouses, not all the amenities, but the clubhouses, the tennis courts, the pickleball courts, everything that you enjoy, she oversees as a committee chair. So I'd like to introduce Yvonne and also Elsie, who is on that committee, and they will present what we've done in recreation this year. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in the Community Activities Committee, uh, we held 63 total events. Um, also, um, we performed a facility walkthrough with maintenance and construction uh, and general services to identify maintenance needs that need to be addressed. Um, our ActiveNet credit card service fees to users, um, we're charging, we're, the fee for using ActiveNet, we're charging that back to the user, and uh, to date we've saved $3,600. Um, we've also adjusted the um, annual lottery for room reservations. So it includes the recurring activities and events for both clubs and private parties. Um, and we've reviewed all 33 operating rules. We've just completed that. Um, I don't want to steal any thunder from our maintenance and construction um, people. A lot of the stuff that's happened over at the equestrian center um, Reza has already mentioned, but I do want to say about what we did. We put a screen to protect the hay from the weather, and um, we put in shade implements uh, on all the outdoor horse tournaments, uh, turnouts, and that's thanks to um, our um, Help the Herd people. They paid for that, not GRF, and uh, they have done a great job over there. Um, and also, we have a show team now that we're going around, and I'm really proud of that. Um, uh, these are residents here that are going to the different horse shows with their horses, and um, I think that that's a great thing. We also have developed a new boarding, boarding, border service uh, program, which increases the revenue over there by 15k a year, and. Um, Reza talked about the trim and uh, the security gates. We have an issue with homeless people, and um, we need to 
uh, protect our stuff, so to speak. Also, um, golf. And the Golf Dreams Committee is the, gives a lot of feedback it and it proves the communication between um, the people that run the golf course and CAC. Um, and we've replaced two full-time assistant golf professors, professionals and um, hired two part-time golf uh, pros. And the driving range is complete. That is a thrill. And that's about $100,000 that goes into the coffers for uh, GRF. Um, the garden centers, um, we've got, we've established an advisory group um, at the um, garden centers, which um, helps the communication, opens the doors to communication <coughs> better. And um, the golf uh, operations team leaders are the ones that are working together with the people that are um, working over there. And also, there's the library. <laughs> okay. And that is really a busy little center we have over there. They have uh, 15,000 cataloged uh, items in circulation. Uh, 22,000 residents visit over there, and most importantly, they have 6,300 hours of volunteer service logged in there. Elsie will help me. Yvonne, <laughs> did you want something? Help me. Oh, uh, aquatics. Certainly. Can you help me with that? Uh, aquatics. One of our biggest attractions here are, are I, I love uh, when people say, where do you live? And th that I'm running down, you know, very modestly, uh, you know, um, seven clubhouses, five pools, uh, three golf courses, you know, in a partridge in a pear tree. And I, I just love watching the glaze as, as we, and one of the big ones, as, as they realize what a, fabulous uh, community we live in. And one of the big ones is aquatics. It's certainly my husband's favorite. And I don't quite understand the, the, the language on this. Uh, the completed pool maintenance scheduled to begin in November. And I reviewed this before, but this didn't stick out. I know that there's regularly scheduled maintenance and we have to close the pools for a relatively short period of time. Um, each pool, at least once a year, and that's to check for uh, damage to the pools and everything has to be scrubbed and cleaned. And, and then, of course, there's periodic pool maintenance on a uh, relatively daily basis. Um, we corrected the locker, and this isn't we that did it, but our staff did it. Uh, corrected locker room plumbing issue caused by tree roots. I forget what, I remember when that happened, but I forget what pool it was. Ma'am, Yvonne, have you remembered? Is your yes, brain cells working better than mine? Yeah, oh, it was, I thought you were waving at me. <laughs> Please excuse me. Um, it was, uh, five. that was in Clubhouse 5, the plumbing issue with the tree roots. Mm -hmm. Because once again, we have Clubhouse 5 that also had its water heater replaced. And there was something else that went on at Clubhouse 5, and I forget what, you, what it was right now. Um, we painted the pool chemical storage bins, make them look pretty. We established a pool maintenance contract to cover pool maintenance employees. I didn't write this. No, I didn't either. And it's, there's nothing wrong with the way it's written. It's just I'm not, not sure how to read it. Let's see. Fitness centers. On average, three days a week. Oh, 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 mercy. Yeah, fitness centers. That means gyms. I don't know why we call it fitness centers, but we do. I guess it sounds classier. So we have fitness centers, and that's part of my uh, 12 Days of Christmas litany is the th three gymnasiums, but they're fitness centers. And um, the one, on average, three days a week, the centers see more than 
300 users at Clubhouse One Fitness Center and close to 300 at the Community Fitness Center. At least, I mean, that place is always full, always crowded. And Village, uh, in a nice way. Village Games had 502 entries. Oh, my husband did this one year. And that's where they have the people from the different gyms are competing with each other. And they have different events. Uh, we had 126 more than last year. Uh, and 13 people were older than 90. And one was 100. And they're really fun. They have competitions. And it's kind of a big deal if you're in the fitness center. Did you want me to do this next page, oh, Yvonne? I Sure. You can go ahead, and then I'll do the uh, last two. Okay. Clubhouse One, which keeps coming up here, uh, because there's been a lot of activity at Clubhouse One with um, uh, MNC and as well as community activities. The floor maintenance in the main lounge was completed in Clubhouse One. Uh, we repaired the main lounge air conditioning, hired some new team members, uh, including a supervisor and a recreation specialist. We improved the Clubhouse One landscaping out in, um, was, was that by the Koi Pond as well, I think. I don't remember if it was this year or last year when they kind of, you know, gave a facelift to the Koi Pond. Uh, we painted the bocce court, <clears throat> added extra electrical panel for the club to better plan for group play. Um, Moved a club to meeting room in Clubhouse Four. To, oh, <coughs> we sh shuffled around some uh, clubs a little bit to save the club money by moving um, and also save space at Clubhouse One by moving the club to um, the meeting meeting room. The meeting room to, to Clubhouse Four. <coughs> I'm almost done. We installed new emergency exit door for the drop-in lounge and reinstated volunteer opportunities at the drop-in lounge. Yvonne, take Thank it away. You. <laughs> Get a drink, girl. Um, on Clubhouse 2, uh, we hired a, two, a new team member uh, coordinator, uh, replaced the Clubhouse 7 main floor. I don't know if anybody heard about that, but uh, they went in there to clean it and we had mold. Oh, yeah. And the floor, and we, because we had the money, we just replaced it right then, in our emergency fund. So and so the clubhouse seven was only down for a minimum of three and a half weeks, and um, we repaired the HVAC, the air conditioning, and uh, now the clubhouse is fully operational. At the performing arts, we hired another team member, a specialist, and we reassigned a club supervisor to the PAC, and uh, she's covering two and seven until um, she was covering two and seven, um, and, but we've now uh, got the coordinator over at two, Clubhouse two and seven, and we assigned, uh, when we reassigned that uh, new supervisor, it's Laura, she's been here for something like a hundred years, no, I think it's 24 years, and she's real familiar, and she's making that uh, pack run really smooth. And um, the hours um, are open during the week um, for uh, the use of all the uh, rooms, and. Um, at Clubhouse Full is fully operational, volunteer supervisors, emeritus and emeritus staff and recreation staff. We had a meeting and to smooth out all our differences, and which was really um, great. And um, at the art room, we stripped and redid the floor. Um, we hadn't done that since before COVID. And uh, the first training, we have somebody gave us a long arm quilting machine. It's a big machine, and it kind of automatically does the quilting for you over there. Somebody donated it to us, and we're giving classes on how to use that. 
And um, at Clubhouse Five, we put in a new stage um, curtain, uh, refurbished the baby grand, and uh, the floor maintenance was um, completed. That um, concludes my report. But I'd like to say that the people in recreation made this happen. Mm -hmm. They're a great team, along with the rest of VMS, but I work with these people closely, and they're real professionals, and that's why all of we might be stumbling over our words, but these people made it happen for us, and I appreciate them so much. Thank you. Very instrumental in a lot of changes that have been made this year, and <clears throat> I have to compliment him on his excellent recommendations based upon our our, our portfolio. <laughs> and thank you again for such a great job. So go ahead and let us know what's happening this year. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Finance uh, is, is involved in everything, either before it happens or, or counting, accounting for it after it happens. And so uh, our involvement, I, I wanted to just summarize our involvement this year because we, uh, uh, along with staff, uh, what we've done is really focus on process because process uh, is critical to the future. And as we transition from PCM, a lot of the processes were legacy processes. Uh, that were not necessarily ha had a foundation in, 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 in a structure. Uh, and so uh, finance focused on that, and I gotta tell you, if it wasn't for the work that staff has done, uh, and, and, and they participated in a lot more things than, than visible to, to us, all of these things we see uh, in terms of landscaping, et cetera, are visible. <coughs> staff is that invisible support of accounting and budgeting are that invi in invisible support that we count on and not even know it's there. Uh, first, let me just uh, talk about the uh, completed audit. Uh, we had, um, we're basically, a, if we were a profit-making corporation, we'd be a $200 million corporation, uh, which is significant. And the accounting audit came out clean, no issues. And it consistently comes out clean, no issues. Now, it's an accounting audit. It means that we do our debits and credits the, the, the right way. But it does look at inconsistencies, if there are any, any and we'll report on inconsistencies. And by inconsistencies, those things where people, I hear a lot, oh, gee whiz, we need a forensic, forensic audit and those kind of things. No one does that unless there's something very, very specific. But our audits, are done very well, and we have a select audit committee that's made up of uh, residents uh, and or board members with a financial slash accounting background that we not only review the process, but are part of the process as it, as it moves on. So just rest assured that when we say we had a, a good audit in 2022, it was a good audit, it was well done. And we, by the way, one of the top five uh, accounting firms in the nation does our audit. The, um, also what we did was we wanted to continue to refine the budget process. And when we have uh, 46, 47 directors of which one third could change every year, there's a tremendous education process that we have to go through to, to educate new directors and, and some of us old directors on what goes on in each one of the departments. Because if we're going to opine and, and, and uh, critique the budget recommendations for each one of the uh, departments, we have to understand what goes on in that department and, and, department and what, what services are provided. So we keep refining that process. And as a result of refining that process, we educate. And then we say, here's, here's where the money is being spent. So by the time we get to the end of the process, it's a smooth glide towards approval. And I don't know if many of you realize what happened, I don't know, three, four, five years ago. There used to be a lot of contention at the end of the process. It caused a lot of confusion. That no longer exists. Uh, and so that, that's because the finance department 
and, and the Finance Committee subtly changed some of those processes with emphasis on early education and consistent education. Uh, we also established a regular scheduling for updates of all GRF fees. What we've discovered is that fees, all GRF fees, were originating in, I'm going to call it the operating committees. In other words, uh, it was either landscaping or community activities would, would say, hey, gee, it's time to look at the fees. Then they would submit that to the finance organization. Finance organization would say, oh, yeah, and then do a study and then say, oh, yeah, maybe we need to, to, to adjust the fees. We've changed that so that the fees get looked at on a regular basis by finance first and makes a recommendation based on cost. And that will be consistent throughout all fees. We just started the process. So based on rotation, uh, some, some will be done every year, some will be done every two years, and some will be done every three years, depending on which one it is. It just establishes a consistency and a, a, of expectation for the entire community to know that when fees will, uh, certain fees will be adjusted. Up to now, it's been random. It's been random. Uh, so again, that's one of the very structural things. And you can see we, we really focus on, on structural changes that make a big difference for our future. Um, the other thing that we did is uh, we've established, uh, and this is pending approval, uh, a consistent and universal cost-based formula for all room rental fees. We, we looked at rental fees, room rental fees this year and uh, there were some su suggestions made, and as they came forward, it was pretty apparent that there were some inconsistencies, not, in t not only in terms of what they were, what was being recommended, but also what had occurred in the past. And so when we peeled the onion back, we decided, let's, let's just take a, a complete look at that. And so we're in the process now of t bringing forward in a, a process that, again, will bring consistency uh, and, and, um, to the room fees uh, for here and for uh, and forever, because again, that hadn't been part of the process before. The last time room fees changed was 2019, and that process was different than the, than the previous process that occurred four, five, and I'm I'm thinking maybe six years before that. So it's been inconsistent. We're going to bring consistency to that, so there's an expectation of when things will be uh, amended. Um, we also, uh, and that's led by me, I'm not sure it's finance, but uh, we formalized a committee to, to, to openly um, uh, study and recommend space utilization as a result of the closure of Building E. And I won't, you know, we're, we'll have, we're having our first meeting on November 22nd. But I think it's important to understand that this all started when we basically, because it was falling down a building that had been with us for 46 years. And so we essentially lost 5,000, 5,500 5, square feet of space that we were used to for 40 some years. Well, that caused uh, a, a lot of concern because, you know, the cost of rebuilding and things of that nature. So we wanted to take a look at it. We tried once to take a look at it because we thought it would maybe a, a very quick, quick fix. It turned out to be not a quick fix. So we said, let's just open it up and put some sunshine on it so that the entire community can, can understand uh, the, the uh, impact of certain directions that we would have to make in order to, to, uh, to resolve that. And last but not least, and, and the pre president complimented uh, us on this, is we did strategically change the investment in bond funds to treasuries to generate a full year increase in 2023 of over a million dollars, well over a million dollars, uh, or 5.8% average, annualized average. And since um, uh, October 2022, when we start to focus on it more, uh, there will, by year end, there will be a 7% increase in our portfolio. Um, and that's an annualized number. So that means, so that, so we, we're pretty proud of that. And, and that was primarily due to a lot of the work of Sageview, our investment advisor who basically took it upon themselves based on, based on our allowing them to, to trade uh, at will to get us out of bond funds. When I say at will, obviously they, we were on call to, to, to uh, approve it, but uh, they selected the time and the funds as to when to sell. 
to optimize the bond funds themselves before we switched to treasuries. And that's what they did. And that's what created this, this extraordinary return <coughs> on our portfolio. And with that, I'll turn it over to um, President Carpenter for resident services. All right, thank you. So resident services, I am just going to briefly go over the highlights. Uh, Chuck does a wonderful job every year overseeing and, and streamlining the technology, making things more efficient. So basically, uh, we have to thank him for these changes. So the improved cash handling process, there was an update, updated resident escalations, uh, developed follow-up work process improvements, created tracking system for repeat tickets to identify root cause, created two part-time resident employee positions. I mean, he streamlined the new hire onboarding. All of this technology that he does that are behind the scenes, and I don't think gets enough credit for what he does. So we have a simplified, now we have a simplified chaos check-in system. He created a call center training. I mean, I could just go on and on and on, but I wanna thank him basically for these changes in resident services. And I will now turn it over to Jim again. <laughs> <laughs> And for I get, information technology. I, I get to wrap it up. And again, thanks to Chuck, uh, uh, Chuck, uh, Chuck Holland and his team for, for supporting the information over ITAC. Uh, I, I don't know if you know, we realize behind everything that we do, including finance, is an administrative system. We call it a computer system. We call it an information processing system. We call it all these things. But there's basically a system behind it. it. It serves as the circulatory system and the nervous system of the entire administrative support system for the, uh, for the village. And uh, in 2022, we embarked upon a complete rewrite. And that's a, that's a significant uh, a challenge because to rewrite processes that have been with us maybe 60 years, and in some of the processes, people don't even know why they're being done. And so when you start to reprogram them and you just say, well, why do we do that? And no one knows because they're all new. You sometimes you discover when you decide that you don't need it, that five uh, processes down, you say, ah, that's why we do it. And so uh, it's, been, it's been a journey uh, and um, we do expect to complete phase one uh, at the end of January and go into phase two. Phase one includes budget finance and a lot of the administrative support systems uh, that we never see. The other, I, after that, last but not least, will become resident services, which will, ha which will occur sometime in, um, I believe, la late uh, fourth quarter of 2024. Um, and uh, really, one of the things that um, that has allowed us to, to, um, to be able to progress in this manner is, is I just want to talk about it. And so I'm going to ask the entire board to join me in, in this process. Right. What are we going to do? Well, I'm just going to show something here. What are we doing? We're going to get dinner. OK. <laughs> What, I, what, what we all thought that uh, we would do today, because uh, uh, President Carpenter has mentioned to us that she will no longer run for president. <laughs> and uh, among her many other contributions, Bunny's leadership and support in understanding the critical role of the trust and other, other governance documents and the processes in maintaining and preparing the village's <laughs> governance structure in its post-PCM days, okay? This has been vital to this community and to this board. Bunny's unique style is sometimes misunderstood, but her leadership prevails, and the work gets done. And for this, we are grateful. Therefore, we are the GRF board, giving Bunny this certificate of appreciation 
Okay. I, I really can't say anything because <laughs> I am so thankful Look. and I'm teary-eyed. So. <laughs> let, let me just read this. It just says, okay. Golden Rain Foundation of Laguna Woods. It's a certificate of appreciation awarded to Bunny Carpenter, President, Board of Directors, the Golden Rain Foundation, from November 2019 to November 2023. That's a long time, folks. For her tireless and effective leadership and service to the board and the community. Presented November 8th, 2023. I can't tell you how much I will cherish this. And it will go right where I can see it every day. So, so thank you. This was very unexpected. So. I know. That's why we did it. <laughs> oh, I am so... Okay, well, my glasses are dirty now, too. <laughs> okay. Thank you again. <laughs> um, so the next I would like to introduce the Inspector of Elections. This is Catherine Burkhart. Thank you, and she will lead our election process when we get to that point, okay? She'll end up taking over the meeting. So next, I would like to acknowledge those uh, directors whose terms have expired. So if you will, I would like you to stand because I want to give you a certificate of appreciation. <laughs> so we have, we have Elsa at first. Kelsey. Okay. Certificate. Thank, Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And Joan. And the only reason Debbie has one coming to when we see you next, wherever she is. <laughs> so thank you again, you know, for your support and participation for the GRF board. So the next is to um, introduce the GRF Mutual 50 delegate, which is Rhina. So Rhina, are you able to stand up and so everybody can say hello? Okay. Thank you. All right, so here's what we've all been waiting for. Money. Yes. May I, may I say something, please? Because I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not running for the board again, so I'd like to say something if it's okay. Yes, go ahead. Okay. All right. Hang on. Let me put, I got to get my notes. It's short. Okay. Um, I just want to say it's been a lot of hard work over the past three years to serve on the GRF board, but it was a labor of love. My love for this community and my desire to make this a great place for our residents. I hope that the new ideas and business experience that I brought to my committees were, were well received. And I'm proud of my accomplishments on the ITAC with the technology updates and my continued work on broadband and my other committees. Um, I'm also proud to continue to offer education to the community via my show, Let's Talk Tech, and um, it's on Village Television, YouTube, and now streaming anywhere in the world on the Village TV app. Um, and then I just want to say being a board member is not an easy task. The, world, the work is challenging and time-consuming, but the people that you see sitting there uh, and before you on the dais – um, they work tirelessly to make this community a better place. And this is the forefront of all of what we, we really care about. Um, and I also want to give um, accolades to the staff of VMS who are also work tirelessly to make the community a better place. Um, they are, you know, they work behind the scenes and they make this place run. So, um, one of the things I do want to say, though, is I will miss most all the members of the GRF board who have become my friends 
And this is not totally goodbye, though, because I'm going to stay on as an advisor for a few committees. But I, I just wanted to express my appreciation and let everybody know how I felt since this is my last appearance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. I appreciate that. Yes. And I can tell you I appreciate your support. And I think you're still going to work on these TV uh, technology films, right? A little bit, or yes, let's absolutely. talk tech. You know, yep, you can see it's it not on, gone. As you can go online and and they're on on uh, YouTube and see any most you know how to do dwelling live, how to do. I can't mm -hmm. tell you how many how many uh, films have you made videos? Uh, Twenty seven. Twenty seven 27 episodes. Mm -hmm. 27 yep. how to's. And, so, yeah, so with lot, and each, uh, yeah, and each episode has multiple segments on different things, so probably a hundred things. But um, it's not going anywhere. We're still on. There, there's a new episode for November on. We are going to run a rerun in December, and you might want to watch because someone else on this board appears on that show with me with this Santa hat on. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, but in January, there'll be a new episode again, too. Um, I, I've made arrangements to continue the show, so all is well. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So the next is to introduce the GRF board candidates, the ones that have applied uh, to fill the, the uh, three positions that we have. So that would be Cash, and I'm sorry, Akabar. Did I ask her a car? <laughs> Thank you. Cash? Thank you. I just wanted Funny to... Funny you can call me anything, but don't call me late for lunch. <laughs> okay. Thank don't you. Don't call me late for lunch. That's All right. right. That's a joke. <laughs> well, my name okay, is... Okay, thank you. I'm just introducing you oh, at okay. each I one of the candidates want... at this point in time. Thank you. Okay, Kush Bada. Would you like to stand up? Okay, Kush. Yay. Catherine Bravada. Yes, thank you. William Cohen, I think he's online. Okay, thank you. Uh, Reza Karibi. Okay, thank you. Uh, Abbas Mohammeda. Okay, he's not here. Joan Milliman. Okay, thank you. Kareem Nakat, and he's not here. Okay, so at this point in time, um, we will have an explanation of the voting procedure and establish the quorum, the inspector of election, Catherine Burkhardt, and she's going to take over the meeting now. Okay, good morning, everyone. So uh, I am going to soon uh, ask for a motion to commence balloting. Uh, after that, we will, I will be opening the ballots, recording, and tallying the votes and then I will announce the election results. We have achieved quorum. The quorum requirement was 6,360 weighted votes. We are at 12,102 weighted votes, so well beyond quorum requirements. So I'm going to ask for a motion to commence balloting. I so move. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to do United first. Opening. Uh, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, we have the motion to seek that way. Thank you. I'd like to ask for a motion to cease balloting. I so move. Okay. Do we vote on it? All in favor.
Will everybody be seated, please? Ah, oh, thanks.
Okay, you ready? Yes. All right. Let us know what the results are. Okay. Okay, so in the order of top vote getter down, William Cohen received 6,790 votes. Joan Milliman received 6,442 votes. And Kush Bado received 6,196 votes. And they are elected to the GRF board. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now we've concluded yeah. from our first part of our meeting, and we're going to take a five-minute break and then come back for the organizational meeting. I am shocked. Oh, send it to my email? Okay. And I'll run upstairs. Oh, Bunny, your mic's on. Shut your mic off, Bunny.
Oh, everybody be seated, please. Oh, okay. All right. All right. They're all up here. We have to, yeah. Have to take your positions. Ready? All right. So this is the organizational meeting of the Board of Directors of the Golden Rain Foundation of Laguna Woods, a California nonprofit mutual benefit corporation, Wednesday, November 8th, uh, which is immediately following the corporate members meeting. This is in Laguna Woods, uh, California boardroom virtual meeting. So I call the meeting to order. Uh, and the next item would be the approval of the agenda. Are there any changes? So if there are no changes, the uh, agenda is approved. The next would be the approval of the minutes and the, the approval of the minutes of the 58th GRF organizational meeting minutes, November 9th, 2022. Are there any changes? So if there's no changes, are there any objections? If there's no objections, then the meeting minutes are approved. Do we have any member comments? Okay, so we will go forward with the election of officers by opening up the nominations. Okay, so the first nomination is now in order for the office of president. Okay, Joan? I nominate Jim Hopkins. Do you? I second it. Okay, just a minute. Do you accept? Uh, yes. Thank you. I'm sorry, can you repeat the motion one more time? I didn't hear it, sorry. Jim. No, uh, yes, it's Jim Hopkins. And... I second it. Okay. And who you don't need you a don't second. You don't have to second. No second. No. Yeah, for my Davis Sterling notes. <laughs> so, okay, are there any other nominations? Uh, Ryan. Wendy Skillman. Okay. Does she accept? I will, yes. Do you accept? <laughs> no, I don't. I feel Jim was our best candidate here. Thank you. All right, thank you. So are there any other nominations? By acclamation. Okay, so uh, 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 <laughs> let me get the words right here. All right, so that means that uh, Jim is the president by acclamation. You have to vote? You have to vote? Look. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So the next the nominations are open for the office of first vice president. So um, are there any nominations for first vice president? Joan. I nominate Juanita Skillman. And do you accept the nomination? I would be proud to. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? So if there's no other nominations, uh, Juanita is, is uh, elected for the first vice president position by acclamation. So thank you. All right, so now the nominations are now in order for the office of the second vice president. And do we, is, okay, buddy, yeah. get your words right. All right, so who do we nominate? I nominate Martin Rosa. So Martin, do you accept for yes, second accept. VP, second VP? 
I accept. Ab okay. Are there any other nominations for second VP? So if there are no other nominations for second VP, uh, Martin Rosa is uh, first vice president by acclamation. Second vice president. Second vice president. Oh, yeah, yes, second, second. you're right. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. So now the nominations are now in order for the office of the secretary. Okay. Madam Chair? Yes? I nominate Joan Milliman for secretary. Okay. I accept. You accept. <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, are there any other nominations for the office of secretary? If there are no other nominations for the office for the office of secretary, Joan Milliman wins by acclamation. So there now we're open for the nominations are now in order for the office of the treasurer. So okay, okay Joan, I nominate Bill Cohen. Huh. Will you accept? I'm honored by the nomination, but I do not think I'm the best candidate. Can't. What did you say? Say that again, Bill. He said no. <laughs> I'm honored by the nomination, but I do not believe that I'm the best candidate, so I'm declining. Okay, so here we go. Okay, Yvonne. Okay, Yvonne. I nominate Kush. Oh, Kush. Okay. Okay. Yeah. As secretary? As no, no, finance? No, treasurer. Treasurer. I would be, I'm very proud of your... Uh, but I'm worse at numbers. You give me chicken, I'll give you chicken curry. I can't do numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> All right. Are there any other nominations for Office of Treasurer? Well, there are none. Let me this Pardon? There are none. Okay. How about right now? Right now, would you? Be in I would like to nominate Rhina as Office of Treasurer. Since the staff prepares everything. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you accept. You accept. You accept. All right. You, you, she understands. Thank you. <laughs> Is there any other nominations for Treasurer? So if there are no further nominations, Rhina, she wins by acclamation. So thank you. All right, so now we have to entertain a motion to approve a resolution of the election of officers. So. So moved. How do we go forward, Catherine? Second. There's no resolution. Yeah, right, we don't have a, le the resolution has to be written. Do we have to sign it? Uh, no. no. Okay. So Catherine, I can substitute. Uh, so he just typed it in, so I don't know if you can see it on your screen. I, I'll, I'll, I can't. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, resolution 90-22-52, appointment of officers. Resolved. I'm sorry. What's the date? Today? Hang on. Eight. Okay, I got it. Yeah, okay. Resolved on November 8th, 2023. Pursuant to the Golden Rain Foundation Bylaws Article 9, officers, which sets guidelines. 
terms and responsibilities for the election of officers of this corporation. The following persons are hereby elected to the office indicated next to their names to serve. James Hopkins, President. Juanita Skillman, First Vice President. Uh, Martin Rosa, Second Vice President. Joan Milliman, Secretary. Uh, and Reiner Reinhardt, Treasurer. Resolve further that the following staff persons are hereby appointed as ex official officers of this corporation. Siobhan Foster, Vice President ex officio. Carlos Rojas, Assistant Secretary ex officio. Steve Hormuth, Assistant Treasurer ex officio. Resolve further that Resolution 90-22-52 adopted November 9, 2022, hereby supersedes and canceled, is, su I'm sorry, is hereby superseded and canceled, and resolved further that the officers and agents of this corporation are directed on behalf of the corporation to carry out this resolution. I move that we yeah, I move this resolution. I'm sorry, I've got two other things. Okay, I move that we approve this resolution. Second. Ryan is seconded. Okay, I'll, are, are there any objections? No objection. Hearing none, the motion is approved by unanimous consent. Sorry. That's okay. All right, I want to thank everybody for your participation and all of you join us at the luncheon over in Clubhouse 2. And thank you. I can't thank you enough. And I just want to let you know, too, that I did not introduce our legal counsel here. <laughs> and I apologize. Lori Poole is GRF's legal counsel and has done a great job for GRF. So. So thank you. If I may, I would like to. to All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everyone. Have a good lunch. Yeah. I miss Have you. Okay. We'll talk to you day, soon. Bye, Jim. You, you too. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Debbie, have a good one. Thank you. It is.